Okay. Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday, May 9th, uh, 2018 Dudley Planning Board meeting. Present this evening, we have uh, Daniel Edmiston, uh, Kevin Sullivan, both members, myself, Guy Horn, Vice Chairman, and Don Johnson, our town planner. We can get right into the agenda for this evening. Item number A, approval of meeting minutes from April 11th and April 25th. Mm -hmm. Has anyone had a chance to read through those minutes? I've had a chance to read through both of them, okay. and I make a motion that we accept both of them. All right, I have a motion to accept both meeting minutes from April 11th, 2018, and April 25th, 2018. Do we have a second? I will second that motion. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Minutes are accepted. Do you have two sets there for us to sign, or just use the ones out of the book? I'll use the ones out of the book. I have the same ones. Okay. Do one. I'm going to sign one set from your book, and I'll sign one set from you. Okay, moving along after the minutes. Uh, item B, discussion on finishing construction of and acceptance of uncompleted, unaccepted, unaccepted subdivision streets, uh, including Pierpont Estates. Uh, request of Tony Secure to discuss finishing constructions of phases one, two A and two B with the board based on an on-site meeting with Jeff Walsh with Graves Engineering regarding plans and final construction standards for drainage structures. Jeff Walsh, Dan Guyon, Highway Superintendent, and I met out there last Thursday, not this past Thursday, but the one before, right okay. after, right after the last meeting. And um, went through the whole subdivision. So, you know, there was a few places the, where the base coat of pavement needs to be repaired and <clears throat> so the catch rates need to be adjusted. Jeff is still looking at the uh, his request to um, take out the uh, granite inlets, throat stones at the at the, at the catch basin rates, and just the way it is right now, that might work some places, maybe not all. But he's, he's working on it. He'll be getting back to us by I don't know, I guess like by next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, retention basins and everything was in pretty much good order. The uh, the sidewalks are starting and. We're at. Okay. So we'll wait till our next meeting and get a, a report from Graves on that one. Mm -hmm. And the next one up was B, under, under item B, there's a subtitle B, Pasta, uh, Piasta Road, update and progress report on completion activities. Yeah, I met with um, the uh, Angel Average yep. uh, people, yep. family, Jonathan and Vicky. Okay. Yeah, with, with Dan Guy on that one as well, and then with Jeff as well. Okay. And we went through everything. This is, this is the base code needs to be repaired again. And um, with some cleaning down the catch basins, it'll be, it'll be the final thing. They're going to finish it this year. Uh, I, I didn't hear any more from them, but they definitely said they want to finish it this year and be, be done with it. Okay, so it could be acceptance. It could be on acceptance for the springtime meeting next Possibly. year. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Another one off the list. Did you get any? Did you get a chance to send out? A, I know last meeting we talked about sending a letter for um, Eisenhower Drive. I haven't got the green card back yet, but we should help. But you did ship it out. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Is there any more on, uh, from Mr. Chiraki either? Oh, on the Sorry. Rocky Hill Estates. Okay. All right. So we'll wait on that one. 
Okay, so we have a uh, public hearing scheduled at 7.15. I don't really want to start that much early because somebody might show up at 7.15 and want to have a comment on that. So we'll, we'll go down, we'll, we'll skip the public hearing for now until 7.15. Go down to the unfinished and old business section. Um, vote on recommendation to May 21st, 2018 annual town meeting articles to amend the zoning bylaws and or zoning map. A is um, by adding text to establish solar district, solar overlay district on lots 19 and 19-1 on assessor's map 215 adjacent to 99 ramps on road and amend the zoning map accordingly. And item B is what we're gonna have our public hearing on tonight, which is a change to the zoning regarding the minimum lot frontage for business 15 district from 200 feet, reducing it from 200 feet to 100 feet. And by adding the phrase and or drive through, uh, drive throughs to use uh, a footnote number two. And uh, yeah, so footnote number two. Footnote number two basically states that uh, 200 feet of frontage is required for apartment buildings, multiple family structures, and or drive-through uses. So that would be, the 200 foot would be staying if you're gonna do a business with a drive-through. Otherwise it could be reduced to 100 feet. So that's what we're gonna discuss at the public hearing. <coughs> D, preliminary subdivision plans, 20 single family lots with access from Jesse Road. Okay, so um, can we go back and hold a vote on C, the A for the solar overlay district? We can. We already had the public hearing. Yep. So we'll have we'll have the um, but we'll do the we'll do the both votes at the same time after we close the public hearing okay, for the deal. we'll do both zoning articles at the same time. Sounds mm -hmm. good. So basically, on the on the preliminary subdivision, we have a letter in our in our uh, we didn't have it in our package, but. Uh, uh, Don shared it with me from the engineers that are working on the plans. They're asking to be put on it to the next agenda, uh, to the next uh, regularly scheduled meeting. It'll be on the 23rd. Right. The 23rd, and, and we still have enough time to, uh, we don't have to act on it until the 26th, so we'll have plenty of time to take care of that when they come back. And the 23rd, there's when they'll have the actual plan itself. And well, we'll they're saying that they're gonna, they're gonna have, they're updating the preliminary plan to the point where they're t taking in all the all the comments from us and from the other town. I want to folks. address all the comments. It's still a preliminary plan, but I just want to address all the comments. Right. Mm -hmm. and do you mind if I just see that really quickly? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Mm. So that'll take care of D. And then E is discussion on status of economic development planning, including integration of the 2015 village district study and scheduling of village district walk. Um, mm -hmm. I don't uh, think we uh, got an email yet on that, right? I have a call into John, and uh, I spoke with Ron at the CMRPC. He's the one who's directing that um, economic development study phase two. Mm -hmm. okay. And he wants to get going early in June. He'd like to talk to the uh, EDC. At this, they're due to meet, as far as I know, next two, this coming Tuesday morning. So. That's a message with John. I haven't heard it back from him yet. I don't know if he's on the agenda or not. We'll, we'll work on that one anyway. Okay. So it looks like we're starting in June. Okay. The study itself. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple things here I'm going to hand out relative to this subject. I want to check with them, too, on the uh, holding the uh, site visit, by the way. So right now it's going to be some Saturday afternoon. We'll see what, how that works out. This is the workshop I went to last, early last week. Either Monday or Tuesday, I forgot. No, I think it's Tuesday. Those are all the programs that the state offers. Very comprehensive. It's short, but very comprehensive. Also, I know we've been hearing a lot about SEDS lately, Community Town with Development Strategy. Mm -hmm. This is a summary of what it is. This is from the uh, Worcester Regional Chamber.
So this is a federal program. It's federal funds, yes. It's the CDA, the Young Adult Administration. Mm -hmm. So, how would we apply for this as a town? Do we just make an individual application or do we ask CMRPC to? I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work at this point, but we're going to roll. CMRPC is working along with the chamber. Mm -hmm. So, uh, usually what it is is, is specific projects. Okay. It tends to be, tends to be you know, I've seen a lot of big projects like industrial parks or things of that type or industrial firms. It's not usually a, like a startup business, maybe like that. Right. As far as the uh, the other one, the multi-page handout, I found that I think where we have the most strength is the first one, the first page. Community-based innovation, where I, if it's not it's not likely that the location W will handle it, will ever land a big, you know, Industrial firm or Amazon or <laughs> that we probably wouldn't land that, but but he's shooting high for Amazon. <laughs> yeah. but we have a lot of talent, hidden talent, I'm sure. Well, thanks for those uh, documents, mm -hmm. Don. You see, there's a lot of programs out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're getting pretty close to 7:15, so I got to find the. Let's uh, be. Public hearing notice. Okay, it's close enough. So, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 5, the Dudley Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, May 9th, 2018 at 715 in the Dudley Municipal Complex, Room 321A, DMC Veterans Memorial Hall, 71 West Main Street, Dudley, Mass, 01571, to review and receive public input on an article to amend zoning bylaws and zoning map, which will be on the warrant for the annual town meeting to be held at the Shepherd Hill Regional High School at 68 Dudley Oxford Road, Dudley Mass, on May 21st, 2018 at 7 p.m. The article is as follows. Article, to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaws, section two, use and density restrictions, 2.04.00, density regulations, 2.04.02, .02, density requirement table, setbacks, etc. Measurement, business 15 district, minimum lot frontage, feet, by changing 200 to 100, and by adding the phrase and or drive through uses following the existing phrase, multiple family structures, that is present, presently at the end of footnote number two under said table 2.04.02. .02. The complete text of this article and associated map and the town of Dudley official zoning map, associated maps in the town of Dudley official zoning map and the town of Dudley zoning bylaws may be viewed in the planning board office or the town clerk's office, which are located at the Dudley Municipal Complex 71 West Main Street, Dudley, Mass. 01571 during regular working hours. The planning board will receive public input at the public hearing any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at this time and place designated. If you wish to comment but are unable to attend, please submit written comments to the Planning Board Office before 4.30 p.m. on May 9, 2018. Mark Maziotti, Chairman, Delhi Planning Board. This ad was run two consecutive weeks. Uh, I believe it was in the local paper. It was in the telegram. Telegram, okay on April 19th and again on April 26th. The time frame is kind of difficult for the, uh, the Webster paper because you have to 
because it comes out on a really comes out on a Wednesday, but it's, it's officially published. The official publication date is Friday. Okay. You get it on by that time, you have to submit it about a month before, so it's it's kind of difficult to difficult. Get yeah. In. Okay, and we have. <coughs> I did have a printout. There it is. So this is the actual printout. Yep. With the footnote. Yep. So basically, what's happening is in the chart under business 15 minimum lot frontage, currently at 200 feet, with a footnote number two. So we would change the 200 to 100, keeping the footnote number two, which I said before states 200 feet of frontage is required for an apartment building, multiple family structures, and or drive through uses. So yep. That's basically all it's changing in this one. Mm -hmm. and I mean, it does make sense from the standpoint of it's a 15,000 square foot lot, and we ha if you look at a residential 15,000 15, square foot lot, we have 100 foot frontage on that. We have a 100 foot frontage on the t res 10,000 square foot lot, but also again the, the footnote of two because res 10 is a, an allowable uh, multifamily uses or apartments are, are, are used by right in residential 10, so that number two footnote carries along there. Mm -hmm. Res 30, we have um, 30,000 square foot lots with 100 foot frontage, and we also have it in the light industrial and the light industrial. Uh, Lane Industrial 43, which is an acre lot, and Lane Industrial 87, which is a two acre lot, both have 100 foot frontages. The thing of it is, is about the minimum you probably have for a shopping area or a commercial site is 200 feet of depth. So if you have a, you have a lot that's 200 feet wide and 200 feet long, you're looking at almost an acre. Right. It wouldn't right. be in the business it's 15. It's very though. difficult to get a business 15, just true business 15 a lot. Right. 200 feet of frontage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it it it, it would still wouldn't be pot. It still wouldn't be impossible to have a lot that's less than two hundred feet of frontage and still have a drive-through if they can prove that they have enough uh, space for the stack up. Because we yeah. do we do have two donut shops that are going on on West Main Street, and I don't believe either one of them have a hundred two hundred feet of frontage. So mm -hmm. I think the way they do it is if you take take the frontage on both streets and they have to add up to two hundred. Some, some yeah, it's a form of yeah, because they're both on corner lots, right? Yeah, they have on corner lots. Okay, so maybe that's how they got by it. But that 200 feet for the drive-throughs will still be in play, mm -hmm. unless they get a waiver or a variance. Yep. And I don't think we're going to receive any public input on this article. It doesn't look that way. No. Mm -hmm. You didn't receive anything in the office no. today. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if there's no other discussion, I'll close the public hearing. Okay. Yeah. Declare the public hearing 720. closed. 720. 720. <coughs> and then all we'll have left to do is vote on the two articles. So we can. So the first one we'll vote on will be the uh, solar overlay district. And again, all this all this is doing is just um, we had a request from from a, a solar company to add these two lots to the over, to the current overlay district. And all the all this is is the recommendation of the planning board to the town meeting. If some other issue comes up, we all know that there's an issue pending with the road that's abutting this project. Mm -hmm. So if the th this uh, the annual town meeting warrant is the warrant of the Board of Selectmen. So if the Board of Selectmen have an issue and they choose not to have this article on the warrant, um, that's that's their prerogative. Or if they choose to stand up at town meeting and have an issue with with it, that's that's also their prerogative. So all we're doing is just voting that it gets to be it gets to go forward to the town meeting warrant. You know, whether it makes it to town meeting is up to the Board of Selectmen. If it does make it to town meeting and the people get to vote on it, if the people vote no, that's their, that's their wish, then, you know, we've done our job. Our job is just to present it to, to the, basically to the town. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, all, that's all this vote is for, is just to uh, recommend it that it goes on to the warrant. And like I said, if the Board of Selectmen has issue with it and decide that it shouldn't be on the warrant, or they feel that it's okay to go on the warrant, but they have an issue with the 
with the uh, project itself, they can they have a right to stand up at town meeting as any resident would and, and, and state their comments and then it's up to the town people, uh, the voters who go to town meeting whether they would like to have that project proceed or, or not. Mm -hmm. So, And I would just like to say that I uh, think we've gone over pretty in depth, yeah. made that pretty clear. And I do just look forward to getting resolution in the future on that uh, abutting road. Yeah. Okay, so the first motion we would be looking for is um, basically the f a motion to um, a motion to approve the uh, sol solar overlay district. Uh, uh, that's not really a it's not really a bylaw. It's a um, the amendment to the zoning bylaw. It's an article. Yeah. So the article to amend the zoning bylaw. Right. So. The first one would be we would be looking for is a, a motion to approve the article to amend the zoning bylaw for the solar overlay district for the lots number 19 and 19-1 on assessor map 215. Uh, these lots are adjacent to 99 Rams on Road. I'll make a <coughs> excuse me. I'll make a motion to uh, accept or vote on the article. Recommend the amendment. approval. Yeah. Recommend read. approval. Yeah. Recommend approval of the article to the amendment as read. Okay. Do we have a second on that? I will second that. Okay, we have just a one small comment. Mm -hmm. The extra word in there it says with the town clerk, the word with should come out of a recommendation. It's not in the bylaw. It's written as error. Okay. With the town clerk. You mean that was in the notice that we read? Yeah. Okay. All right. Not a problem. All right, so we, on the solar overlay district, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Our second zoning article that we have that this evening, the one that we just read and went over, was the change for the business 15 district frontage from 200 feet to 100 feet, uh, except in the case of um, multifamily housing and or drive through uses. So we have a motion to approve that article. Yeah, I, I'll make a motion to uh, amend the zoning bylaws as just read. Yep. Mm -hmm. Recommend to I mean, to approve. Yep. yep. I will second that motion for the recommending the approval of. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. So both of those articles should be presented to the Board of Selectmen and then it's at, at their discretion what, what, where they go from there. This is a sample of the uh, report that we made the last town meeting. We just do something simple like this to the send on to the town meeting. Yep. Yeah, this is just the mm -hmm. that's what we did the last time. So he would just update that memo to include the two new articles. Yep. Do they actually have numbers on them yet? I'm not sure. I, I, I watched the select part of the selectmen's meeting from last week or earlier this week, I guess it was, a couple days ago. And uh, Greg is going through numbers. I'm not sure what the numbers are on this, but we can certainly we can reference check that. with Michelle, yeah. Make sure that they're final before we do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because yeah, they still could switch around or something. Yeah. They could They could move them around. They could yeah. inject one, add one, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure it's the final numbers before I send out a report. Sure. Okay, so we've taken care of item C. We went through D and E and F. I don't think we're going to have any comments. Oh, actually, it's comments from the planning board. Do we have any item G? Do we have any comments from the planning board? Mm, Not at this time for me. Yep, agreed. Nothing. As yeah. far as comments from the public, yeah, I, I guess we, we do sort of a comment. There's a copy of the letter in your package from yes from the uh, the person who was concerned about the uh, sprinklers, the sidewalk areas, and the apartment space. It's in the back of your. Look under item J. It's not in my book. I don't know if it's yeah. seen there it is. Yep. Okay. And it's the address is Nine Noble Street, so that's part of the uh, Pierpont <coughs> subdivision. And I think this is this would be the third person that's got issues with sprinkler systems in the sidewalk area. We're about three that came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this would be four. Right. Oh. I think it's probably a th <coughs> three. Oh. Okay. Did anybody have a chance to go up there and take a look at what was actually going on? I have not. I did not know. Okay, so I took a, I did take a drive up there to see what was going on, and I, I have to say, I mean, I was 
I was very surprised at <laughs> how clean and neat it was where the, where the sidewalks were going. Literally what they were doing from what I could see was taking a mini excavator and digging like a five foot path right precisely where the, where, where the sidewalks had to go. The lines were straight. Mm -hmm. All the dirt that was removed was gone. And they already had, the day I was there, they already had the new processed gravel put back into the areas where the, where the sidewalks were going to go. Yeah, it was there. They were unloading the gravel, basically, and did not spread yet, but yeah, yeah. It, was, it was about to be. I mean, I've seen other, other subdivisions where they put the sidewalks in a year or two after most of the houses are built, and mm -hmm. it, it usually looks like a big mess. Yeah. And because you end up with a, you know, you end up with a little grass strip between the road and the sidewalk, and then, you know, that usually gets destroyed by the equipment going back and forth. But this looked pretty good to me. I, w I was amazed that it was it was coming out. So it, it just looked clean and neat to me. I, st I still understand that these people have, have their sprinkler systems and they're upset um, because their sprinklers are damaged, obviously. Um, but, I mean, I think it's going to have to come down to what, where the sprinkler is in the in the right of way of the or the taking of the of the roadway, if they were, then it's not the contractor's fault. If it if mm -hmm. if it's on their property and the contractor is on their property and that did damage to it, then they they have a, they have a, a a definite legal issue. Mm -hmm. But it's not really under the purview of this board to go out and decide whether they're <laughs> where the sprinkler systems are. In this here about the temporary construction zone. And exceeding those bounds, is that something that would make it fall under ours? No, it's, it's not really. It's not really a temporary construction zone. It's it's well, I guess, I guess you could call it a temporary construction zone. It's basically the envelope or the taking for the roadway, which, right. which is basically what I stated at the last meeting. It's 50 feet wide, depending on where that gets centered on the on the on the roadway. Mm -hmm. You could have one side of the road where it's you know literally 12 feet, and the other side could be 13 feet, or one side could be 15 feet, and the other side could be 10 feet, but there's a 50 foot taking for the road. The road right. is inside of the taking and then there's land on either side for the sidewalks to be installed. And as long, so that 50 foot strip of land where the road is to be installed and the sidewalks too, is basically right now, it's still, it's still by the, owned by the contractor. He hasn't, he hasn't deeded any of that land over to the town. At, at some point in time, once the subdivision is complete, that's, that's that's when the town would then take that land over. So that would be a deed that would actually transfer from the, the contractor or the developer right. to the town of Dudley. And then that 50 foot piece of land on which the road and the sidewalks and all the utility structures and stuff are built, that would then become public property. But until the, that happens, it's still the own, the own, the contractor owns it. The temporary construction easement beyond that area too, but that's something that's, you know, it's in the sufficient terms of the easement, whatever that may be. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Like um, when they did, when they did the road work over at Nichols College on Central Road, they had to get um, temporary easements from all the homeowners that abutted that road. Right. right. And I think that at, on that project, I believe that there was one homeowner that was a holdout. <laughs> so the house is still there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyways, I mean, I, I was expecting to see a lot worse. Uh, situation when I went over there, and, and I was kind of amazed that it was it was going on as as well as it was. So, um, like I said in the past, I've seen situations where it was a lot worse, and I think this is, you know, I, I don't think I don't think any of the work was being, um, in my opinion, I don't think any of the work was being done grossly, and I think it was, you know they were trying to do it as neat of job as possible. I think it just happened that these sprinklers were in the wrong place or maybe there's a possibility that they are on <coughs> private property I don't know but I think that the contractor would have had the sidewalks laid out by a, a licensed surveyor so he knows where to put them mm. otherwise it looks like they it looks like they did because they're very they're really precise right yeah, the photo looks really nice as yeah. far yeah. straight and yeah nice, well laid out so I think um, you know it, it's it's basically going to come down to a legal matter between the contractor and the homeowners unfortunately right so I don't think there's anything that this board could really do one way or the other. And, and you know, like I said, we're not we're not we're not engineers. We're not surveyors. We can't tell them where the property line begins or ends. It's up to them to to know that and know if the work is being done on their property or not. So, but we have yeah. I think this is our third comment about the situation. So. Mm -hmm. 
We'll have to see if they can resolve it before the vote for the acceptance of the subdivision comes up. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be taken care of. <laughs> and next meeting, you think next meeting we, we will have comments back from Graves Engineering as far as the drainage situation goes up there? I think we will at Graves, yes. Okay. And um, based on that letter from uh, Ranger Engineering, I think we should also have comments on the comments. Yep. And them as well. Okay. All right. Do we have any um, do we have any vouchers that need to be signed? No vouchers. Okay. I was wondering, do you still want to have a meeting before a town meeting? It's probably it's probably a good idea to schedule a half hour meeting just in case something comes up. We can. <laughs> we, we usually do it. We, we've done it in the past pretty much for every town meeting. Yeah, yeah it's just a pretty good idea just to be there just in case something comes up. You never know. Yeah. I mean, if town council has some questions about right. the roadway or situation with the solar farm. Right, right. And would that be the half hour before the town meeting itself? Yeah. Yeah. 6.30. Yeah, you can schedule it, because if we don't use it, we, it's n n no harm. Better to schedule it, not to right. schedule it. Rather than have to stand up and make comments. Yeah. No, I agree. Okay, so I think that closes our agenda for this evening. If nobody else has any other comments, uh, looking for a motion to adjourn. Anything you want to bring up, Don? Well, then I'll make a uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. I will second that motion. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. 733. Good night.